the thing about this X-Men stuff is it's been an absolute joy. Like, I've, I've felt like a kid doing it, um, and, it, and it's, it's got that kind of energy. You know, when you read, when you read House of X for the first time, you're like, you, you know, it, it's, it just works, right? It does. So. It does. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, as always. And today, Marvel Comics dropped a lot of preview information for Jonathan Hickman's X-Men number one. And thankfully, a lot of it was things we hadn't heard yet. So today, I'm going to cover the CBR.com article, then I'm going to read some excerpts from artist Lionel Yu's Newsarama article that I thought were pertinent to the conversation. Then Skip and Tosh and I are going to talk about the preview, as well as what we have planned on our channels for covering X-Men number one from Jonathan Hickman. And I hope you do enjoy the interview very much. Without further ado, let's get to the CBR.com article. With the conclusions of the House of X and Powers of Ten 12-issue miniseries, Marvel Comics is moving forward with its revamped X-Men line of comics. The first title to launch out of the Dawn of X publishing initiative is X-Men No. 1 by showrunner Jonathan Hickman and Lionel Francis Yu. The series has been promoted as starring every single X-Men, but the first issue cover features almost every member of the Summers family tree. Though the cast may be large, a preview of X-Men No. 1 puts a focus on just two of the X-Men leaders, Cyclops and Storm. The duo is out on a mission to take out one of the new threats to surface during House of X. Orcus is an organization comprised of the great minds from various groups, including S.H.I.E.L.D., AIM, HYDRA, and others. The collection of humans are trying to stop the rapid rise of the mutant population, which will eventually see mutants surpass humans as the dominant species in a short number of years. Part of Orcus's strategy involves a mother mold robot hovering in space around the sun. In one of Moira X's timelines, the existence of a mother mold can lead to a mutant hunting Nimrod being created. When a squad of X-Men head to space to destroy the mother mold, they're all killed. However, one of the bigger revelations in House of X is the mutant resurrection machine that can bring any deceased mutant back to life, which is why Cyclops, Marvel Girl, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, Mystique, Husk, Archangel, and Penance are back among the living. Now you might understand why the X-Men have such a grudge against Orcus. The X-Men number one preview reveals Cyclops and Storm are in the middle of raiding the last Orcus stronghold on Earth, and the two leaders are making quick work of guards and robot defenders. Cyclops and Storm make a pretty good team, but the X-Men don't normally travel with such a small contingent. As they make their way through the compound, Cyclops and Storm find Orcus's main lab. Cyclops relays his information to someone he refers to as Sir, and the final panel teases this person's grand entrance. There are only a few candidates to the identity of this person, but our best guess would be Cyclops' father, Corsair. He's one of the individuals listed on the introduction page, and the Starjammer spaceship could be what's entering the scene. Out of all the Dawn of X titles, X-Men is definitely the one for fans to pay attention to. Hickman as a writer automatically makes this a must-read, but it should also be where fans can catch up with their favorite mutants who aren't already starring in other titles. The cast will be ever-changing that should keep things fresh as the overarching story progresses. Now I'm going to cover three of the questions Lionel Francis Yu was asked during his Newsarama interview. Newsarama asked, You've got a long history with the X-Men, including a run alongside Chris Claremont. What sets this Dawn of X relaunch apart? Lionel Francis Yu answered, I think I've vastly improved as an artist since 20 years ago when I had the privilege of working with Chris Claremont. I had a lot of shortcomings as an artist and it was a struggle. Right now, I feel I'm more artistically equipped for Jonathan Hickman's amazing vision. Newsarama then asked, You're taking the team to the Savage Land in upcoming issues. What else can you tell us about what you're drawing there? You responded, This is where we meet those new villains that may surprise a lot of people. I'd rather not say more to avoid spoilers, I'm just having a lot of fun and I feel like the young punk artist I was 20 years ago. I'm stoked. The final question from Newsarama, what's it like working with Jonathan Hickman? How much detail goes into his scripts? You responded, one of my favorites for sure. Most scripts are similar in density, but what sets writers apart are their pacing and story ideas. I really get excited reading Jonathan's scripts even without the visuals. I just hope I give the story justice and convey to the readers the energy of the plots. It's a massive story that will be remembered for years to come. Jonathan Hickman is on fire. Now that I've covered the CBR.com article, 
and the Lionel Francis U interview, let's get to the preview with my buddy, Skip and Tosh. Joining me today, Skip and Tosh, we got the first preview for Jonathan Hickman's X-Men number one with Lionel U as the artist. What did you think? Are you excited? Or are you even more excited for X-Men? Uh, I am, you know, it, it's, I don't always get hyped off of hearing people talk about their own stuff because like, that's what interviews are for, right? The people interviewing them want to get some content and the people being interviewed want to hype up what they're doing. And far too many times I've gone and checked out what it was, be it a movie or comic book. And I'm like, eh, not as exciting as you made it seem to be, but I really do like the way that, uh, Francis, uh, is it Lanil you? I was having trouble. It's Lanil Francis you. Okay, Neil Francis, you um, the the way that he was talking about it and not just the way he was talking about, but deeper what he was talking about as far as like new villains and um, and everybody being involved, like all the mutants, you know, and the rotating cast um, really, 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 really excited me. Yeah, you know, it, I was um, I got really stoked because he's written X-Men a lot. So for a writer to hand him a script that gets him really excited, say, this is massive, it's going to be epic, you know, it, it kind of resonates a little bit more, uh, more with me because he's not a he's not an X-Men new by any means at all. You know, he's a veteran of it. So he's seen, you know, some of the best scripts. He's drawn for Chris Claremont. So when it comes from somebody that has that kind of lineage with X-Men, you know, it gets my uh, juices flowing even more. So I, I, uh, I really like that interview. So... I don't know about you, but when I saw that first cover for X Men number one, I was like, "Is it the Scott Summers Jean Grey Family Vine comic book?" Did you have that same concern after seeing that cover? Um, y yeah, I was, I was, I wasn't as concerned as I was, I guess, like just kind of, yeah, questioning, like, okay, is is that what we're gonna do? Are we gonna make? them is it since it's the i guess the first lady and the first man <laughs> of the x-men are we going to make them the center and try to kind of turn it into a family thing i thought i even saw corsair um uh cyclops's dad on one of the covers or in some of the solicits but he's definitely been in some of the solicits okay well there we go so that's at least how how it how it looked to start, but I figured that it wouldn't stay that way the whole time. Because at first I was like, "Oh, well, maybe this is their book," and I was like, "Nah." And then reading the interview and hearing how it's going to be a rotating cast that made sense. Me being a Jonathan Hickman fan and East of West being my favorite comic written by him and drawn by Nick Dragata, my favorite artist. Um, it's an ensemble cast type thing, and I think Jonathan Hickman really, really put on display after his years of working on the Avengers runs and all, um, you know, the Fantastic Four. He's like, I know how to deal with individual characters and I know how to put them together on a team and I know how to make their characteristics shine in a team dynamic. So for him to do that so well with East of West and it kind of be a rotating cast kind of game of Thrones ish, but not mm -hmm. the same flavor, just that principle him coming over to this. I was like, Oh, rotating cast. Oh, he's going to, he's going to execute this nearly flawlessly. Yeah, so I was really excited, you know, because I wasn't expecting to see Storm. And there she is with Cyclops. They're storming the Orcas compound, the last Orcas compound on Earth. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, this is really exciting. You know, or I thought maybe the Orcas thing would kind of be pushed to the wayside after they destroyed the Mother Mold. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad they're going right back into it because that's one of the best parts of the entire uh, House of X Powers of Ten story arc, for me at least. Yeah, I, I actually wanted to revisit that quite a bit, especially with... Um, Dr. Dr. Ollie or Gregor, you know, who's, um, you know, spoilers if you guys haven't uh, finished House of X and Powers of Ten yet, but her, her husband is taken away from her. He passes away and trying to defend the Orcus compound, the forge. And uh, so, you know, I was like, oh, that's obviously a story beat her and Karima being with her. So when it didn't get revisited, I did think in my mind, OK, that's a seed to be planted. And that was one of the first seeds to be planted. So I think that's going to be one of the main through lines for the mainline X-Men book. And then some of the other things I think are going to spill over into the spinoff books. Yeah. So uh, I think the, the enemy looks interesting. The, the interview promises all new villains. Are you ready to see new, new villains? Or were you hoping to see more of the, uh, the classic villains for X-Men? Um, well, the thing about it is that like, with the exception of like some, you know, robotic and actually I can't even say that. I mean, heck the phalanx showed up. Um, any most of the main villains that we like Midas like a, a, a striker or whatever 
are mutants, but they're all joined together. They're all kind of, you know, on one accord right now. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm ready for some new stuff to me. Enough of the old got uh, homage paid to it. Like it paid homage. I'm looking forward to the future. Jonathan Hickman kind of wrote a love letter to the past, kind of wrapped up continuity, used Moira to make it all, you know, mean something and have weight. And then now it's all about, you know, going, going forward. And, I think as we go forward, Jonathan Hickman's one of those kind of, you know, reconstructionist guys to where he's still going to, you know, do beats from the past. So I think we're going to get a, a healthy dose of what we want to see from the past, you know, give us the nostalgia and the feel good. And But this train is chugging 100 miles straight forward, baby. All right. So one of the last things, what did you think of the art? I know, uh, you know, we I think we got four teaser pages. Was, were you excited about that? Was there anything that you would have changed? Um, at first, when I saw the solicits minus the cover, which I think you might've even said something about how like covers these days aren't as dynamic. I keep looking at like Jack Kirby stuff and I'm like, there's so much mm-hmm. power and movement and action. And I look at modern day ones and I'm like, everybody Everyone's wants to standing school. looking in a different direction. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> okay, you guys went to art school, you know, Kirby. It's, didn't. All, a, <laughs> it's all a Charlie's angels, like movie poster. Is, you know what I mean? Let's all yeah. stand back to back. <laughs> okay. So the, the cover had beautiful colors, and it's nice to see the people I like, but it, it had no inertia to me. And then I go in and I see some of the things on the inside, and still, honestly, still a little stiff to me. Like the like the lines are where I see excellence, but the power, the motion, the 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 power within a panel. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm i'm not seeing it so i'm but the, but the art is very passable i've seen much worse so oh, yeah. i'm uh, the art is passable and then it's a jonathan hickman script so i'm just gonna write it through and i'm sure i'm sure he'll get rotated out and another artist will get rotated in and jonathan hickman and pepe Larraz kept dropping little x thing our next project so i think they're just gonna bring pepe Larraz onto the main line uh thing probably after a, a trade or two I believe the plan right now is for RB Silva to take over for X Men somewhat okay. soonish. And then Pepe Larraz um, is going to work on Jonathan Hickman's uh, following X Men book in phase two. That hasn't been confirmed yet, but that's all the rumors I hear is that RB Silva will be taking over here and Pepe Larraz will actually be what, well, you know, it's rumored to be um, Uncanny X Men, but I don't even know if that can be true now that they're using the. Uncanny X Men legacy numbering on X Men number one. Uh, Marvel, yeah, stop I, I, with the legacy numbering. You're ruining everything. <laughs> doesn't even make sense. But um, but Hickman put out a tweet, and I don't know. I mean, sometimes it's hard to tell. It's Jonathan Hickman. You don't know if he's poking fun at something or if he's being honest. But he put out a tweet about how the 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 numbering got messed up, and they're looking that like is a printing error, and they're looking to see how they can how they can fix it. Digital is no big problem. You just take that one page, fix it in the PDF. I it think he was being tongue in cheek saying, this is a new dawn of X-Men. It, the legacy number should be one because right. it's, it's a whole new start. I think he was being tongue in cheek. Don't say this is, this is an uncanny X-Men. This is a new X-Men. I think he was trying to maybe toot his own horn, but which at this point, he he rightfully could do that, you know, because uh, <laughs> Alcibax I mean, Powers would tend to be more successful than anyone could have imagined. I mean, yeah, I agree. But, I mean, it's true, though. Like, practically, wouldn't you think that this is a whole new thing? And he literally just wrapped up all the old continuity. Why would they use legacy numbering? Well, would you like to know why the Legion of Doofuses like to use legacy numberings? <laughs> it's, as you started to say that, I think back and I'm like, this is C.B. Sobolski. He does like his fake number ones. Yeah, well, he also likes his fake milestones because, you know, once you get to an X-Men 750 or maybe an 800, then you can you can make it a 48-page comic book and sell it for $14. Wes, you're being and way too all- gracious. Yeah, as soon as he gets to one of the tens, like 70 yeah. or 80, it's already going to be a landmark oh, issue. Yeah. And it's going to be at least eight, uh, seven bucks. Yeah, yeah. Once you hit 25, that's an $8 comic book. You make it to 50 because it's X-Men, it'll be a $10 comic book. Mm-hmm. Make it make it to 100. It's $12 right there. $12. Easy. And then $100. that doesn't even count the fake milestone that happens in the middle, you know. There might be a 613. 
<laughs> you gotta get some money out of these customers. I'm telling you, he's gonna charge a hundred bucks for that a hundred issue, issue. You you mark my words. There'll oh, be a variant maybe. cover that's a hundred dollars. Well, there, there will absolutely be a variant cover. Let's not go too off topic here, but you know why Doc stopped being a completionist with X Men, right? Why was that? When X Men Gold and X Men Blue um, they released, they did special uh, Jim Lee variant covers from his classic X Men run, and they mm -hmm. came out onto the market as one thousand dollars each. Wow. And then I'm he decided bad. it he didn't want to be a completionist X Men collector anymore, and he was out of the game. So <laughs> he's a only Doc Marvel can just like uh, chase the most ardent X Men fan in the history of the comic book out of collecting all of them <laughs> by being just complete jerk offs. <laughs> <laughs> more or less, man. More or less. That's exactly what has happened. Doc, you're yeah. a wise man. Le leave them Absolutely. in the dust. How could you? How do you drive off a guy like Doc from Collect Next Men? Completely stupid. So, uh, you know, just to wrap this up, of course, right here, you are going to get an outside the bleed on X Men number one. I will get an X Men number one review up on Wednesday. So that'll be a Wednesday, Thursday double slam on that one. Uh, Skip and I obviously be on that for uh, OTB. What are you going to be doing on your Twitch channel, man? Are you going to have a, a live read through or are you going to be doing anything for your Twitch re uh, viewers? Um, yeah, right now we're um, we're doing four issues at a time of House of X and Powers of Ten in preparation for Wednesday. So we finished four last night. We'll do four more tonight and then we'll do four more on Tuesday and then that'll leave us clear on Wednesday. So if anybody wants to join, it's uh, twitch.tv backslash Skipintosh, S-K-I-P-N-T-O-S-H. There's only one I. And then you can come hang with me as I go through those books just as a refresher. And then um, you'll get uh, Wes's review on Wednesday. So you can jump right back over there and then stay there because then on Thursday you get OTB outside the bleed when Wes and I discuss issue number one of X-Men. So make sure you guys stay tuned here. And uh, if you're looking for a little extra, come meet me over there. I got it for you. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me, Skip. X-Men number one is finally here. The new dawn of X-Men couldn't be more excited, and I will see you on Thursday. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.